Today we are diving into one of the most requested tutorials following my recent showcase video, the vibrant desert scene with the iconic orange and teal look. This video got a lot of love from you guys and plenty of comments asking for a breakdown. So here we are. In this video I'll show you how I achieved that look in 7 easy steps. But before we jump in, a quick heads up. Some of the tools I'll be using today are paid. If you are not up for using paid tools, you may want to stop here and check out some of my other tutorials focusing on just DaVinci Resolve's built-in tools. You can find the link right above. So, without further ado, let's dive in. Let's start with our project settings. If you've seen my previous tutorials, you know I work with a colored space transform CSD workflow. So I'll be using DaVinci YRGB for my color science instead of DaVinci YRGB color managed. My timeline is set to DaVinci White Gamut Intermediate and the output color space is Rec 709 Gamma 2.4. In our CSD notes, we transition from our camera source to DaVinci White Gamut Intermediate as it gives us the maximum flexibility and fidelity for color grading, ensuring uh, richer colors and finer details across the image. For our output CSD, we go from DaVinci White Gamut Intermediate to Rec 709 Gamma 2.4. And here I've set tone mapping to handle a dynamic range with a maximum of 10,000 nits and a minimum of 100 nits. Next, let's increase our exposure just a little bit, right about here. Now, the first set of DCTL tools that I'll be using in this grade comes from Mononotes, developed by the talented colorist and software developer Stefan Ringel Schwantner. You can find this DCTL pack on his website mononotes.com under the name Look Lab Print. In our node tree, we'll place the first two of these DCTLs, look and lab, right after our input CSD, and the print DCTL will be positioned towards the end, just before our output CSD. The first DCTL, Monolook, includes three specific negative film emulations, uh, Monolook 200T, 250D, and 500T. For this clip, I'm selecting the 250D film look, which mimics the wide tonal range uh, and dynamic colors typical of spare year 250 ISO daylight film. Next, in the Monolab DCTL node, we'll fine tune the look we chose in the previous node. Here, I'll slightly increase the subtractive saturation and adjust the red density to enhance our visual narrative. In the last node, before our output CSD, we add the Monoprint DCTL. This tool leverages DaVinci Resolve's free LUTs, allowing us to split them into color and luminosity components. It also includes a shadow slider for detailed shadow adjustments and separate sliders for red, green and blue shadows. And here for this project, I'll choose the Kodak 2383 D60 look. As our final touch, I'm going to bring in my go-to plugin, Dehancer. Let's add it to our node tree here. As you may know, Dehancer comes with a set of features enabled by default. So let's scroll all the way down and turn off all tools. Then I'll set the quality to high and adjust the color space to DaVinci White Gamut Intermediate. Here we'll make three key adjustments in Dehancer. First, let's increase the temperature to enhance the warm orangey tones. Right about here should do it. Next, under the Film Developer tab, I'll lower the contrast slightly for a softer feel. And finally, I'll activate the color head and shift it towards yellow a bit more, just to intensify that warm ambience. And there it is, the complete transformation into the iconic orange and teal look using a combination of powerful tools and detailed adjustments. I hope this tutorial helps you bring your own creative visions to life. Don't forget to play around with these settings to see what works best for your projects. If you enjoyed this walkthrough, please like, subscribe and hit the bell icon for more updates. And also share your results and questions in the comments below. I love seeing what you all come up with. Thank you and I'll see you in the next one.